Hello students. Today's topic is how taxes on sellers affect market outcomes. Let's start with this topic. So what is tax incidence? It refers to how the burden of a tax is distributed among the various people who make up the economy, which includes buyers and sellers. We begin by considering a tax levied on sellers of a good. Suppose the local government passes a law requiring sellers of ice cream cones to send $0.50 to the government for each cone they sell. How does this law affect the buyers and sellers of ice cream? Step 1. Whether this law will affect the demand curve or the supply curve. The immediate impact of the tax is on the sellers of ice cream. Because the tax is not levied on buyers, that is the reason the quantity of ice cream demanded at any given price will be the same. Thus, demand curve does not change. By contrast, the tax on sellers makes the ice cream business less profitable at any given price. So, it shifts the supply curve. So, one thing is clear that demand curve will not be affected this law will affect the supply curve now let's come on to step two that whether the supply curve will shift towards right or towards left basically whether the supply will be increased or decrease because the tax on sellers raises the cost of producing and selling ice cream it reduces the quantity supplied at every price and that is the reason the supply curve will be shifted towards left. We know that when a tax is imposed, it increases the overall cost of production, which means that there will be lower profits for the firms and in that case, firms will decrease the supply of a good. So the supply curve will shift to the left. And there will be a leftward shift in the supply curve. In addition to determining the direction in which the supply curve moves, we can also be precise about the size of the shift. We can understand this thing from the figure. As you can see, we have two axes. On the vertical axis, we have taken price of ice cream cone. And on the horizontal axis, we have taken quantity of ice cream cones. This is the initial demand curve D1. This is the initial supply curve S1. Intersection point will be termed as the equilibrium point. Equilibrium price is assumed as $3. And equilibrium quantity is assumed as 100 ice cream cones. For any market price of ice cream, the effective price to sellers is the amount they get to keep after paying the tax. In simple words, effective price received by the sellers will be equal to market price minus the taxes paid by the sellers. In our case, right now market price is $3 and there are no taxes so it is dollar zero so the effective price received by the seller is dollar three so this dollar three this one this can be termed as price without tax now suppose that the government has imposed dollar zero point five zero tax on the sellers of ice cream we know that in this case, supply curve will be shifted towards left. As you can see, supply curve has been shifted leftwards from S1 to S2. And effective price will be equal to market price, which is $3 minus the tax imposed by the government, which is $0.50. Now the effective price will be reduced 
टू डॉलर टू पॉइंट फाइव जीरो सो द इफेक्टिव प्राइस रिसीव बाय द सेलर हैज बीन रिड्यूस्ड वट एवर द मार्केट प्राइस सेलर्स विल सप्लाई अ क्वांटिटी ऑफ आइसक्रीम एज इफ द प्राइस वर डॉलर जीरो पॉइंट फाइव जीरो लोअर दैन इट इज बिकॉज सेलर्स विल सप्लाई अ क्वांटिटी ऑफ आइसक्रीम ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इफेक्टिव प्राइस एंड इट हैज बीन रिड्यूस्ड टू इंड्यूस द सेलर्स टू सप्लाई एनी गिवन क्वांटिटी द मार्केट प्राइस मस्ट नाउ बी डॉलर पॉइंट फाइव जीरो हायर to compensate for the effect of the tax so basically it means that to induce sellers to supply the same quantity the given quantity this market price should now be dollar 0.50 higher to compensate for the effect of the tax so earlier if it was dollar 3 now it should be dollar 3.50 so that the effective price received by the seller will remain same that is dollar 3 we can also understand this thing from the figure as well to induce the sellers to supply any given quantity to supply the same quantity this market price should now be dollar 0.50 higher to compensate for the effect of the tax so as you can see in the figure in this way it should be dollar 3.50 now focus on this part this represents the size of the shift of the supply curve this is the size of the shift in the supply curve this one this can be calculated as dollar 3.50 minus dollar 3 which is equal to dollar 0.50 and this represents size of the tax this is the tax imposed by the government we can say thus the supply curve shifts upward from s1 to s2 by the exact size of the tax which is dollar 0.50 clear now let's come on to step 3 that how this shift in supply curve will affect the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity new equilibrium will be achieved at the intersection point of the initial demand curve and new supply curve that means this point so this is the new equilibrium new equilibrium price is assumed as dollar 3.30 and a new equilibrium quantity is assumed as 90 ice cream cones so as we can see from the figure that the equilibrium price is increased and equilibrium quantity is reduced equilibrium price is increased and equilibrium quantity is reduced because sellers sell less and buyers buy less in the new equilibrium the tax reduces the size of the ice cream market implications we can now return to the question of tax incidence that is who pays the tax although sellers send the entire tax to the government however buyers and sellers share the burden because the market price rises from dollar 3 to dollar 3.30 when the tax is introduced buyers pay dollar 0.30 more for each ice cream cone than they did without the tax so this is this price dollar 3.30 this is the price buyers pay 
thus the tax makes buyers worse off because earlier they were paying dollar 3 and right now they are paying dollar 3.30 so they are paying 0 0.30 higher okay thus the tax makes buyers worse off sellers get a higher price which is dollar 3.30 from buyers than they did previously but the effective price after paying the tax falls from dollar 3 before the tax to dollar 2.80 with the tax so earlier when there was no tax the effective price received by the seller was dollar 3.30 before the tax but after introducing the tax of dollar 0 0.50 the effective price received by the seller is reduced because this is the new market price. This minus the taxes imposed by the government is $2.80. So this is the effective price with the tax. This $2.80 is the price is the effective price that sellers receive and this gap this gap will be the tax of dollar 0 0.50 because we have already seen this thing that the supply curve has been shifted upward from the size of the tax which is dollar 0 0.50 so this gap this difference will be dollar 0 0.50 so 3.30 minus dollar 0 0.50 equal to dollar 2.80. Thus the tax also makes sellers worse off because the effective price received by the seller has been reduced. Earlier when there was no tax, effective price received by the seller was dollar 3. But when the tax is introduced, the effective price is reduced to dollar 2.80 and that is the reason the tax also makes sellers worse off to sum up the analysis yields two lessons first one taxes discourage the market activity when a good is taxed the quantity of the goods sold is smaller in the new equilibrium as we can see from the figure that Earlier the equilibrium quantity was 100 ice cream cones and now it is 90 ice cream cones. So taxes discourage the market activity. Second, buyers and sellers share the burden of taxes. In the new equilibrium buyers pay more for the good and sellers receive less. As we can see from the figure that in the new equilibrium, buyers pay more for the good. Earlier they were paying $3 and now they are paying $3.30. So buyers pay more for the good and the effective price which sellers are receiving is less. Because earlier the effective price was $3 when there was no taxes and now the effective price which the sellers are receiving is $2.80. So the buyers pay more and sellers receive less. Thank you.